guys, in class number three, we want to talk about the lights in Maxwell Studio. This is a very, very amazing topic because Maxwell is a physically correct renderer and it can help you to achieve anything, anything that you want in the lighting process. Okay, we have three types of uh, lights in Maxwell. You have emitters or light shaders. You can turn any object that you want to light with this option, you have to create it in the material section. This is the one of the most uh, useful types of lights in Maxwell Studio. We have environment lights such as IBL image based lighting. You can load any HDR image, spherical HDR image that you want and use it in Maxwell Studio to lit your scene with your image okay and after that we have an amazing amazing physical sun and sky feature you can see that feature by default if you open the maxwell studio you can see this feature uh it this is enabled by default but you can turn it off in the previous class i told you that you can go to environment go to type and choose non feature to turn off the environment lights and you can set your own emitter if you want okay here we have our previous scene i can zoom on the object or in maxwell you can uh, select any object that you want and press c on keyboard to put it in the center of the frame or center of your viewport this is really cool because this can be very useful to speed up your process and you can use it a lot very good we have three spheres one ground plane object another plane object that we apply a meter to it okay if you go to material section you can see the shaders that you apply to any object that you see very cool i'm going to choose the emitter i'm going to press fire in the interactive preview section and you can see my render very very cool now we want to talk about this emitter that we have here in our scene. If I choose the plane, you can see this is a P plane 2 and we can click on emitter and this is the option in the material editor that you can see, okay? The type of the light, area, IES. For IES, you need to load the IES file, okay? Or spotlight. For the first type of the light, we want to talk about the area light that this is very, very similar to at the real world lights that we have in photography or cinematography. This is very similar to many soft boxes that you can have in the real world situation, okay? If you go to the internet and search about the soft boxes, you can see these light sources. This is the soft box, this is the umbrella light, octagon lights, okay? Another or many, many other studio lights that you can use in the real world and if you have any object with the surface and apply the emitter to it, you can have a very, very nice area light with the area shadows. This light is really soft, as you can see in the fire. This is a very, very soft light with a very, very soft shadows. And you can copy this object and apply another shader to it and uh, create another situation of lights, okay? For doing this, if I choose my object and right click on it, go into objects and press clone, you will have another object here, okay? This is the clone version of your object. You can choose the orientation of your axis here, okay? This is about the object or you can press on this and change it from local, from object to world and move your plane number two here, rotate it, very good, rotate this object to something like that, and I can see now I have two light sources. This is very, very amazing, and I can change anything that I want for these two types of area lights. Okay, but we have one emitter for both of them. I want to set a unique attributes for this and another unique attributes for this light. For doing this, 
I need another emitter. I will go to add emitter to or change it to cold or cool. Cool temp light and change the first emitter name to warm underscore temperature light. And I will click drag the cold or cool to the second light. And I have two light sources here with two shaders, okay? And I will talk about these amazing features now, okay? So we have these options here, emission, preset, color, and other things. First thing that we want to talking about is the emission. We have three types of emission here, color, temperature, and HDR. You can choose a color for it. When you want to use this, you can choose any color that you want in the color section. You can click on it, and this is the color picker window, amazing color picker window in Maxwell Studio. And you can choose your color, your custom color that you want. This is the color swatches. You can choose any color in it or you can click drag on this triangle, change the hue option and use the RGB value or HSV, hue, saturation and value and the XYZ. I'm going to RGB. You can use the color picker or click and choose on any color that you want and click OK. The white light is red now and you can see that in the interactive preview or Maxwell Fire. If I go into the options, I can change the color to temperature. For temperature, you can use Kelvin degree. And uh, this is the great feature because you can use real world color temperatures and see a physically correct render in Maxwell. If I choose 2800, I can see my uh, light is going to be a very, very, very warmer light. And with this number, I have the less intensity of my light. If I choose 10,000 value, okay, in Kelvin degree, I will have a very stronger light, a very brighter light, but a very cooler light. Because if you goes up and up and up and up in the Kelvin degree, you will have a very cooler light. But if you're using a very low amount of Kelvin, such as 1000, you don't see any light feature, okay? But there is another option for exposure control in Maxwell. And this will be camera, but we are not going to talk about the camera and the sensor and the camera features in this class, okay? We will talking about it later. I can use temperature, I can choose the slider, I can choose real world temperature, but you can use it in the color feature. You can turn on the Kelvin and this is a unique feature and this is not going to change your power. This is only the Kelvin. If you want to use temperature as your power, as your brightness, and as your cooler or warmer light, you can use this emission type. But if you want to have unique option for the Kelvin and unique option for the power, you can use the color and check mark the Kelvin option. This is so insane, okay? I can change the power from 40 to 100 and change the Kelvin to 2800. Now you can see I have a very warm light with the power that I want. This is not going to change my power. If I choose 10,000, I will have a cooler light, but it doesn't change my power. It doesn't change my luminance. It doesn't change my brightness. This is really, really amazing that you can have many, many controls as you want in Maxwell. If you go to the internet, you can see many, many, many links and many infos for color temperature. You can go to the images and uh, see many different color temperatures for 
many different lights. Candlelight, 1500 Kelvin, or you can go to warmer and warmer lights and cooler and cooler lights. Daylight cold is about 5600 Kelvin to 6400 Kelvin. You can write them out, okay, or write them in the notes and use them in Maxwell. Very amazing. But also you have these presets. You have these presets with different watts, with different color temperatures, and you can use them all. Okay, I want to set this light to 16,000, okay? And our warm light temperature to choose Kelvin, 2,800. Very good. This is the mixture of the warm light and the cold light. One of the amazing mixtures that you need to use in your realistic scenes, okay? Very cool. I can change the power to 200 and change this to 200. Very good. Zoom a little bit. And this is my scene. This is the first scene that we create and using the lighting features in Maxwell Studio. Now we want to talk about the luminance. We have power and efficacy here, lumen, loss, candela, and luminance. If you're going to Maxwell documentation, okay, this is really, really great. Going to lighting and emitters, you can see all of the data that you want here. Area emitters, spotlight emitters, IES. If you're going to area emitters, you can see luminous power here, illuminance, luminous intensity, and luminance, okay? Lumen, Lux, Candela, and Neat. Good. For Lumens, this is the LM and an SI uh, international system of units for luminous flux. You can see light manufacturers usually use this data and you can go to their websites and see their products and see the information about the products and you can see Lumen. You can write it down, you can use that number and go into Maxwell and put the number in the light and you can see the same brightness. But the illuminance is the lux. Lumen per amp power two, lumen M2, okay? This is specifying to illuminance. This is a very, very great feature because if you increase or decrease the scale of your emitting surface, you can see stronger and weaker light that you have in Maxwell, okay? Luminous intensity is candela or CD. Candela is another, okay, SI unit that you can use it for luminous intensity. The power of the light emitted in certain direction and you can have neat CDM2. You can have neat that one neat is one candela per square meter. Okay, these are the real physics that you can use in Maxwell Studio, okay? If I'm going to the scene, if I delete this light, very good, and change my view, choose this light, and choose the shader, and change it to Lumen, you can see the Lumen. Output 100 Lumen, I can change it to 5000 Lumen, okay? And change scale, and you can see there is no difference. You can see the difference in the shadow, sharper and softer, okay? But there is no difference for the brightness. But if I'm going to change the scale to something like this number, uh, okay, very cool. You can see a very, very soft light with the same power. But if I'm going to use the Lux, Lumen M2, Lumen per M, Power by two, okay? And change it to 50,000, okay? And change the scale to a very, very, I can use this. You can see when I change the scale to a very, very uh, little object, you can see the difference for the power. You can see we have a weaker brightness. If I change it to a higher number for the scale, you can see we have more power. 
This is the difference between the lux and lumen and difference between the candela and the luminance or neat. Okay, CDM2 neat. In neat, the scale will change the power. As you can see here, change the power. If I have a bigger area light, I will have a stronger brightness. But in the candela, if we change scale, we will have no difference for the power. These are the options that you can use, but we have another option, power and efficacy. This option allows you to specify how much electricity a light source consumes. This is the watts. And also you have lumen per watt. Maxwell will let you choose how many lumens emitted per watt. This is so amazing. You have two options, power and efficacy. Efficacy is the lumen per watt. This is the output. Power is 1000 and efficacy is 17.6 and output is 17. 1600 lumen but if I change the scale I'm going to use this scale and choose these numbers you can see the power you can see the soft shadows you can see the area lights but if I going to change it to a very tiny little object we will have the same power but a very very sharper shadows okay these are amazing we will use them in a very 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 complex scenes and you will see how you can use these options okay but in many cases i'm going to use power and efficacy feature this is a very very amazing feature in maxwell very cool this is the end of class number three we talked about the area lights we talked about the emission, color, color temperature, Kelvin degrees, luminance, all types of luminance. We talked about the neat. We talked about candela, lumens, locks, and watts. Uh, in the next class, we are going to use these lights with the camera and see how we can control the exposure with the camera sensor. And this is totally amazing. I will see you next week.